Chapter 13 Memories of a Tragic Tale A car would race through the forest out of breath, still unable to conjure up a plan. The best way that he could possibly hope to stall was to hide since running wasn't an option. He knelt low behind an oddly shaped bush and felt that he had lost Wa for the moment. His muscles were tense with stillness while he hid, constantly hoping that he wouldn't be caught by surprise. Akaru turned around then looked behind himself to his left and right but found no one in his search. It was the first time in any conflict that he felt nerves kicking into high gear for fear of being ambushed. Usually his setting senses allowed him to be accurately aware of everything around, but Wa's phasing ability made her undetectable, neutralizing what he felt was his greatest advantage. Akaru peered through the leaves of the bushes, and as he turned again to glance over one shoulder, he found the enemy standing to his left displaying a thrill grin. Wa booted Hikaru's face before he was able to stand, her shoe striking his profile and causing him to tumble over onto his back. If I were you, I'd keep my mind focused on this battle instead of worrying about saving that worthless girl, she lectured. Hikaru scrambled to stand, but Wa shoved him back onto his butt with her foot. What is it that you worry about her safety? Hikaru bristled forward. Because I promised to protect her. So bad, Wa sneered. Because it's obviously a promise you cannot possibly keep. You shouldn't attach yourself to her so much. Warriors of the storm have no friends, just allies at the most. Wa shoved Hikaru's torso back to the ground with her heel. There can only be one master of the storm, so eventually you have to betray one another. I never betray Amber. Then she'll betray you. If it turns out that way, so be it. As long as I can keep my promise. Wa cast her fixated gaze into Hikaru's eyes, making him feel as though she were staring through and into the pits of his soul. Chills ran through his flesh while he eyed her in the exact same manner. You're a fool, Wa spat snidely, but a fool with unanswered fulfillment, Sakaru said, trying his best to buy time. What do you know about Elitus? Wa chuckled briefly. I should have expected that a man's last request would turn out to be pointless. You won't live, passes that to me, Elitus. So what does it matter? Just satisfy a dying man's wishes, Hikaru demanded. Wa nodded with agreement. Elitus is a group of powerful warriors who form an organization of five highly skilled members to make themselves even more fierce. And how do you know they're the most powerful if you've never fought them? Wa stomped down hard on Hikaru's left ankle as he tried to get up, causing him to wince in pain. I have fought them, she went on, and I got the opportunity to do it when I had no talent or skills to fight. Then how are you alive now? There was a brief moment of silence that filled the air with immaculate intentions, then Wa smirked menacingly. I was about to go to the that you protect when I met the bravest man I ever known, and I only survived because he taught me my skills. And I breathe another breath today because he willingly sacrificed his own life for mine. Then was it Elitus who took the life of this man you speak of so highly? Akaru asked, Wa failed to respond. So tell me then, what would a man with the heart to give his own life say about the woman you've become today? A woman so willing to snuff out the lives of two teenagers? Wa pressed down hard upon Hikaru's ankle and dug in with the balls of her foot, almost making him want to cry out, but he held in his yells. Well, Tense Katawa did say he wanted me to keep growing. To be blatantly honest, those were his final words, and I've grown in power. Wa stated, Hikaru seized the opportunity and attempted to strike her with his free foot. Wa phased out to avoid the blow, while Hikaru managed to quickly get to his feet just before she phased back in. They both stared momentarily. For the sake of the earth, I will defeat Elitus. Foolish boy, you can't even defeat me, Wa chuckled. You're wrong, because this battle isn't over yet. Fierce determination lit up Hikaru's eyes as he bit down on his bottom lip to numb the pain of his ankle. You see, someone with a brave heart gave their life for me to survive too, and unlike you, I refuse to let their death be in vain. Hikaru raised both his arms forward at shoulder length. Using his setting control, he created a strong straight line that streamed toward his enemy and ripped through much of the plant life, causing limbs of trees to snap. Already phased out before the technique could reach her, Wa lunged after Hikaru, who reacted by running away once again. He sprinted through the forest, running through the pain of his left ankle, but this time it wasn't a meaningless effort to stall. After seeing Wa's ability several times, Hikaru managed to form a hypothesis on how it worked. When 
she phases out, her hack must allow her to escape into an alternate dimension, which explains the reason why I can't sense her on the setting at times. Hikaru glanced behind himself while he continued to push his body to move faster. If I can somehow perform an assault and keep her in that ghostly state for an extended period of time, perhaps I'll strain her hack. He halted in his tracks, but there's only one thing that I worked on with the destructive power to do that and it almost killed me last time. Law effortlessly caught up. Have you finally decided to accept the fact that you're gonna die? Hikaru released enormous amounts of hack and his storm force began swirling around the forest in every direction. Law phased out of the dimension instinctively using her projection to see into the forest as the pressures of Hikaru's storm force uprooted plants snapped the twigs of trees and swirled back into his direction. Hikaru felt the huge weight of his hack as currents flowed through him, almost pushing his body to the ground. Wa shook her head and her phantom-like vigor approached him face to face. It's obvious that you don't communicate with the storm often, she scoffed. Even an amateur such as yourself should know better than to use power past the point of control. Regardless of storm water's structural creation, there are always deadly consequences for such careless acts. Wa constricted her own hack which caused her projection to shine bright blue as she phased back in and released a supreme amount of storm force making the entire area around them appear transparent. Hakara was flung into a tree trunk, his hack molding cuts onto the bark as his storm force continued to swirl wildly around him and he fell to the ground on all fours. Barely managing to get up under the weight of his own power, Hikaru stumbled and lunged forward at his adversary, throwing everything he had into one solid punch. Wa phased back out and Hikaru passed straight through her, halfway splitting a slender tree with his bare knuckles. You're far too slow, Wa taunted. I don't even need my sensors on to feel you come. She gazed at the fractured tree. And don't think I am unaware about your attempt to force me to phase out for an extended amount of time. Unfortunately for you, my storm force can easily dominate your own, and I guess you botched on that little plan. What are you talking about? Hikaru mumbled exhaustedly. I'm talking about your underestimating my power. I'll make you pay for that mistake. Hikaru turned to face Wa as she charged forward. He took multiple swings but she phased out and his punches passed through her projection. Stepping through her opponent, Wa turned around after phasing back in then sent five powerful punches that penetrated Hikaru's storm force and pelted him against the back. She eyed her enemy as he fell and smashed into the ground face first. You thought you could beat Elidus? Yeah right, you can't even touch me, she flaunted. Wa materialized the katana inside her right palm. And the girl you promised to protect? None who will kill her, just after I know if by him that I finished you. Hikaru turned his head. Lying on the bruised side of his face, he spied the tip of a sharp blade only inches from his throat. Bet you didn't know that a member of Elitus was killed, he said softly. Nonsense, snapped Wa. That was just a bunch of internal politics. Even the great Elitus can't escape the fact that there can only be one master of storm. Come on, an amateur defeating one of the best warriors of the storm? I can't believe you actually duped by such outlandish rumors. The member was more than likely killed by his own teammate, who apparently tried to cover up the murder by using the final unknown fighter. And believe me, everyone in that organization keeping one eye open for another betrayal. Hikaru inhaled loudly. You're wrong. I saw the member with blue hair chasing after a masked man. Wa's facial expression dropped in bewilderment. This means that the rumor's true. Elitus has weaknesses. Hikaru pounded his fist into the ground, causing a huge jagged wave of stone to tear through the soil, ripping through the plant life. Wa focused her storm force underneath her feet, then used it to thrust herself backward onto the high branch of a tree. Hikaru kept his hand pressed hard against the dirt while he got to both knees, rapidly keeping the sharp tips of the stone of his combatant. Wa leapt from the branch, phasing out before she landed on the ground, inches away from prickly edges of the solid wave's base as it halted in front of her. With her projection glowing and her blade still in hand, she raced through the stone wall, appearing ten feet to Akaru's left as he arose upright. Why are you so determined? She asked, glaring with guilt. I believe we've already been over that, Akaru said exhaustedly. He took a step forward and his knees almost buckled with pain. 
So why are you looking pathetic? Don't tell me you have a conscience. I thought you were the type of person who only cared for yourself. Wa grasped the hilt of her sword with both hands, then pointed the tip in Hikaru's direction. You're just like Tengs Gatawa, down to the last wire, she confessed. And I admit, your spirit has scratched the surface of my frozen heart. Luckily, my blade is even colder. Hikaru forced out every ounce of hack he could muster while Wa charged forward with her sword ready to kill. With his power swirling wildly out of control, he could barely stand under the intense pressure. Wa halted in her tracks, phasing out as the hack moved the air with low category hurricane forces. Hikaru felt faint and there was a loud sound thumping inside his chest violently. He thought while floating adrift with the sensation of pain, I really must be dying. Then there was emptiness, nothingness surrounded him, and his body felt like it could never hit the ground, only fall deeper and deeper into darkness. A voice whispered softly, Why are you here? I don't know, Akaru breathed. Were you really ever alive? The voice questioned. I really don't know. None of us ever really do. The voice and Hikaru both gently laughed. Do you remember why you're here? The voice whispered once again. No, please help me remember. What is it that you desire, Hikaru? I desire power. Why is it that you seek this power? To protect the ones I care for most. And who is it that you promise to protect? Amber. Now here's your final question, the voice said rigidly. What is the quickest way to power? Hikaru felt a surge of energy run around his body, igniting wildly while pressing hard against his skin. He opened his eyes to find himself still standing half asleep and his flesh torn with cuts. Bright light surrounded him while the plants around the area disintegrated into nothingness leaving a huge desolate spot on the forest ground. In her ghostly form while watched in astonishment unaffected by the destruction. What is everything around you dematerializing? And what is this strange white hat you're able to emit? What kind of fighter are you? She yelled. I'm the master of the storm! Akaru pronounced loudly, the earth trembling beneath his feet as he charged forward with the intent of destruction.